Okay, so we got our water sample on a shady spot. Um, now it's time to go ahead and go through the test. Your first test is going to be chlorine and pH. And these are the only ones that these color charts here are pertinent to. Um, the rest uh, we'll, we'll get into later on. But how you view these or how you fill them, get to the proper marks, is pretty important. Um, if you look, there's lines right there where you have to get your line up to your water to that mark um, there and over here. So for your pH, you're going to go up to the top line. Uh, for alkalinity, you're going to come down here to this, this lower line. Right now we're just covering pH and chlorine. So fill up your tubes. You hold the batter tube firmly. This is the best way to get it down to the marks because if you're trying to dump it, you're just you're going to overshoot or undershoot, and you're going to just always be struggling with it. So hold the bigger tube firmly, and this will take some practice. But then you just flick. If that hurts on your fingernails, you know you can you can try doing it uh, with just tapping lightly. But that's the way I found is the easiest for me. Okay, so I'm going to put a picture up here that shows a convex in the water. The water doesn't lay flat in these tubes. So you need to make it so that the convex is at the, the bottom of the curve in the water is at the top of the line. For your pH, hold it like this and just tap the side. Once you get a little practice with it, it becomes a lot easier. So we've got our water at the right levels. We do our chlorine test. You read the top panel, it tells you how many drops to add. One, two, three, four, five. You do that like that. One, two, three, four, five. And if that is has chlorine in it, it's going to turn purple. It is slightly purple, which means chlorine is probably at about half a part per million or one, um, just under one. So that's okay. Uh, chlorine dissipates sun, heat, take chlorine out of the pool. Another conversation we'll get into later on how to maintain and keep the chlorine in your pool. Uh, pros and cons of using tablets, but um, that's that for now. We've got a pH, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Put our cover on. We're gonna shake it. Then we look, see where our colors are at. Best way is to hold it up and look at the northern sky. Uh, preferably in a blue, that's how you get the best best reading. And you can see we're at about 8 on our pH. So this next step tells you how much acid to put in by drops. So we're going to put one. Should probably be holding it and trying to kind of shake it a little bit. If it doesn't mix thoroughly, you can put the cap on. Just give it a shake. Two drops, give it a shake. That gets us perfect, 7.4. So you go into your book and you see how much to decrease your pH using muriatic acid. Um, muriatic acid, dry acid are the best ways. 
uh, dry acid is going to be more expensive uh, in the long run um, just because you have to add more of the powder to get the same effect as the muriatic acid will. Um, so you follow that, that step there, get done with your sample, dump it out. It's always a good idea to just rinse your tubes. I'll rinse that off later with a hose. Now we're going to fill up for our alkalinity test, which we're going to go to the halfway mark on this big tube. And the other nice thing about the measuring cup is you can get it pretty close on these. And scored perfect on the first shot. So let's go with it. First thing we're doing on this, on this test, you want to be holding it and shaking it a little bit. So we're going to use sodium thiosulfate, which is going to reduce the chlorine. One, two. Okay. Then we're going to go to this step, which is alkalinity. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Should have been shaking during that. Shake it, mix it, shake it, mix it. If you want to, you can put the cap on it and do that. Then we're going to add this test to see where, how many each drop is going to be 10 and you take your, whatever your total is and you multiply it by 10 I am going and that'll tell you where you're at on your down. alkalinity. Best range to be is between 80 and 110, 20. Uh, I usually shoot for right around 100. Uh, but let's go. Again, you kind of want to shake it as you're dropping. One, One two, two, three, three. I'll be adding a little bit of alkalinity to this pool uh, just to raise it up slightly. Calcium is essentially the same same thing. You just follow the directions on there. And then you read the book on how to dose it properly. All right, so now to do our cyanuric acid test. You get this little bottle in here and you're gonna fill it with water to this line. And then you're gonna add this chemical reagent all the way up to the second line. So on this one, to get the water down to where you need it, which we're pretty darn close, I suggest putting the cap back on and just squeezing out one drop, one or two drops at a time. All right, that gets us perfect. Then we take our bit here and we bring it all the way up to the second line. Put the cover on. It says a shake it for 30 seconds. Okay, now that we have it all shaken up, we add it into the small tube and there is a dot on the bottom. And basically you add it until you don't see the dot anymore or until it's completely full and you see the dot. And that means basically you have a very low cyanuric acid level, which can be good or bad depending on how you look at it.
part. So we're probably at about 20 on our cyanuric acid, which I usually like to be around 30. I'm sure there'll be some uh, pool pros that'll get in the comment section and argue with me about this. But it's just something I've learned from time. Uh, the cyanuric acid is, is a stabilizer when you see chlorine tablets. It says stabilized chlorine tablets or chlorine tablets with stabilizer. Uh, it means that they contain cyanuric acid. Once you get up above a certain amount, the chlorine actually loses its effectiveness. So I've found that 30 for me in my area is a magic number. It may be different in your area. But if you're maintaining your own pool, then you can you can experiment with it. And if you see your pool starting to turn green or something on your own, well then you know you can shock it, add some chlorine right away, just to uh, calm that down, and then you know do a test and see what's going on with your water. Uh, that's it on the testing part. I will have a link for this test kit in the in the description. Um, I've used this for years. You can buy online all the reagents, um, and a lot of your uh, pool stores or Ace Hardwares uh, that sell pool chemicals will have these things that you can replace them on your own. Um, nice thing about understanding your pool chemistry is you know exactly what to add. And by reading that book, you'll probably be more educated than most of the people that actually do your water testing and are just trained to answer certain ways uh, because the bottom line on a pool company is they need to sell you chemicals to stay in business. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you think it'll help anyone, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with anyone that you think may need to see this that is looking at trying to cut costs out uh, with the prices of everything going up so crazy, uh, this could be a very good avenue for them uh, if they're paying a high price on pool service. Thanks. Have a blessed day.